I hate pheasants. All right, maybe not hate exactly, but we have a complicated relationship and it, it tends towards hatred. They're, they're beautiful creatures, don't get me wrong, and they have a storied history. They were introduced to the country by the Romans because they thought they were pretty and they tasted good, and they can taste good, though they have the dubious honour of being the only bird that is typically cooked to be more dry than Christmas turkey. Dubious indeed. And there's so many of them that they're cheap to get, which is okay. But if you poach them, you can still get in a lot of trouble, not commensurate to the price of a pheasant. So, yeah, given that they're good eating, and I know how to cook them properly and, and everything, and they're, they're tasty and they're pretty, what could it be that makes me hate them so very, very much. When it comes to most species, you can kind of puzzle out why their peculiar behaviour actually makes sense from the point of view of the species as a whole via group selection or via the perpetuation of the genes, as in the selfish gene. People ask, you know, why do people, why do animals do what they do to survive in what they assume to be an ultimately pointless universe uh, w without a god, because they have their biases in that way. And most of the time you can find a reason, the most basic one being the creatures that don't survive, don't survive. Uh, you know, natural selection is, is perhaps the most obvious thing there. But when it comes to pheasants, pheasants are nihilists. Pheasants don't, don't care. Pheasants don't seem to want to live. I mean, the whole reason they're in this country in the first place is for people to hunt them. That, that, is, that is their sole and only purpose for being here. While some may escape and, and live wild, the majority of them are raised in pens and then released into a, an unforgiving wilderness uh, where they live a few terrifying months before they're shot by farmers working on it, well, farmers and hunters working on an industrial scale with a bunch of beaters to knock them out of hedges and so on, and then they get blasted by fusillades of, sh of shotgun fire. Yeah, th that's a pretty bleak existence for an animal, though, you know, being delicious and being apparently fun to hunt, you know, these are good from a genetic point of view, but on an individual level, pheasants are nihilists. There's no other creature than the pheasant to which the epithet bird-brained can be best applied. These are not intelligent creatures by any stretch of the imagination. They are perhaps the most stupid bird in existence, judging from their behaviour. It may just be that they grow up sheltered and then get thrown out into the wilderness to survive, which they are singularly bad at. So there's an awful lot of wastage of pheasants as a hunting animal, on roads, to predators, to cats, to dogs, to birds of prey, what, whatever else. It's it's like releasing a, a, a school trip, a bus worth of infants into a sausage factory and expecting everything to go well, unsupervised. That, that's kind of what it what it's like to release these creatures into the wild, but they do it anyway. And they're dumb. So how can they have figured out that their existence is pointless and meaningless and that they live only to die? Their existence is entirely for the pleasure of a handful of toffs to shoot out of the air. And then they don't eat most of them. They go to local shops or they get wasted, frankly. When a brace, that's two pheasants, costs you only one to three pounds, it just kind of goes to show the, the value that's attached to these birds, you know? And it's not much, because you have to pluck them and gut them yourself. This is something I know how to do. Gruesome, but they are tasty and worth it. But, uh, but despite their stupidity, somehow they seem to understand that their existence is pointless and to seek to end themselves constantly. It's like they have an existential crisis on a genetic level. And this is a big part of why I hate them, because they remind me of my own mortality and suggest to me that somehow pheasants 
know something about reality and how depressing and awful it is that I, with all my ape intelligence, have not yet been able to figure out. So from spring through to autumn, shooting season, the, the local countryside is flooded with suicidal birds having an existential crisis uh, about their existence and the, and the meaning of being and so on. And so they commit suicide in enormous numbers by getting hung up on barbed wire or diving out into the road under your car. This is a, this is a favourite pastime, particularly of male pheasants. You'll be driving along quite happily, keeping an eye on the road, being careful, and then all of a sudden an idiotic male pheasant will hurl itself out of the hedgerows right in front of your car. And they always dodge in front of the car. They, they clearly want to die. And they will do anything in order to do it. In, in fact, maybe maybe they're not suicidal. Maybe they're programmed. Maybe there's some kind of conspiracy from car insurers. Because if you're going fast enough and you hit something even as light as a pheasant, you can end up with a cracked radiator or, or a burst tire. Yeah, it's not always just a startled and a, a cloud of feathers. Sometimes you can do serious damage to your car, so maybe, maybe it's a conspiracy. But either way, the pheasant ends up dead and you end up feeling bad and wondering what it is exactly that is so terrible and overbearing in the knowledge of the pheasant deep down in its genetics that makes it want to die so badly. There's a series of short stories by Larry Niven, I think, um, called the Draco Tavern. And in one of those stories, there's this alien race that supposedly is working scientifically on the problem of whether there's an afterlife or not. And then the entire race commits suicide, apparently having discovered what this is, and just leaving a charnel house planet. Just everyone's dead. And other races come across this and try to figure out what went wrong what they found out, why they all committed suicide, but they were kind of warily because they're not sure that they want to and a few alien scientists I, I think end up killing themselves because they've figured it out and it, it's an unsettling feeling and it's a theme that has turned up in other forms of science fiction. I believe in planetary there are scientists who were strapping themselves to atomic bombs because somehow that meant you didn't go to, to either heaven or hell when you died. Yeah, it's a, it's a recurring theme that finding out the truth about an afterlife, if there is one, will somehow turn out to be horrifying. And pheasants, in their eagerness to kill themselves, give me that same unsettling feeling that maybe the afterlife is worse the longer you live. Something like that. It's a very it's kind of Lovecraftian level of existential angst that the suicidal ideation of pheasants gives me. And it's also pointless. It's like, like fox hunting, which is repugnant and cruel. This isn't necessarily cruel, per se, given that the pheasants seem to want to die, but it's just every, every autumn you get a bunch of toffs out in the fields with shotguns blasting away at animals that don't seem to care whether they get to live or not. It's not very sporting, is it? I suppose ethically it's better to kill things that want to die. But from a sporting point of view, surely that's not very exciting or, or very impactful. It's like strapping on a suicide vest and going into a cancer hospice. And sure, the explosion and everything's pretty, but what's the point of killing people on the edge of dying anyway, what kind of message does it send? None, really. It's a kind of pointless exercise and you probably did people a favour by putting them out of their misery. And so it is with, with pheasants. So many are released. So many die of natural causes or car causes. Then so many get shot to the point where they're practically worthless as, as food and a lot go to waste. And what, what is the point? There's this whole pointless industry of, of breeding them, releasing them, shooting them. Why? And maybe that's what bothers the pheasants so very, very much, that they kill themselves. I guess what bothers me so much about pheasants is that in many ways they reflect 
our, our, our own existence in that we are bred in this sheltered society then thrown out into the wild for the singular purpose of other people's entertainment and profit and then we just die kind of seems pointless doesn't it but let's not end on a down note now there's lots of advice out there on how to cook a turkey so as to, so as to keep it moist so here's my tips on how to cook a pheasant oil it up you can put butter under the skin or, or whatever it is you want to do. I just find rubbing it down with olive oil helps. That way you get nice crispy skin and it helps keep the, the flesh within moist. My second major tip is that about halfway through the cooking process, turn the bird upside down. That way all the fat and juices will drain down into the breast, which is where most of the meat is, and that will keep it very moist and put more flavor into it. If you do those things, Oil up your bird and cook it halfway through upside down, you'll end up with a much more edible and tastier pheasant. Zang. Pity you leave us such good sport. Unless you're a pheasant.